Hello friends, uh, welcome back to NPTEL online certification course on soil and water conservation engineering. I am Rajendra Singh, professor in agriculture and food engineering department IIT Kharagpur. We are in week 5, lecture 21 and today's topic is grassed water wage. Just to give you an idea about the course content which we are going to cover in this week, today we are starting with the grassed water wage and next lecture that is lecture 22 will solve problems on grass water wage. Then lecture 23 we will see parabolic grass water wage and then lecture 24 and 25 I will dedicate on solving gate numerical problems on for gate examination that is graduate aptitude test in engineering on various topics which we have covered like uh, soil loss, uh, rainfall erosivity index. Uh, burns, terraces, grass waterways. So, all the problems that have been asked in previous uh, years question papers in gate we will solve in lecture number 24 and 25. Coming to grass water wage, these are natural or man made water courses. So, this there is nothing but uh, a water course or a channel normally the term normal term we use is channel and here we are calling it uh, water course or waterway and they could be either natural or they could be constructed that is man made. And they are typically shaped to require dimensions and lined with erosion resistance grasses. So, typical uh, thing is that uh, we, we provide uh, the required shape uh, either with, uh, whether it is natural or whether it is man made and uh, we provide a natural shape and the normal shapes which we will see little later are parabolic, trapezoidal or triangular out of which in field conditions parabolic is more popular. So, we give the required dimension and then we line the, the beds in the side of the channel or these waterways with erosion resistance grasses because as, as the name itself suggests they are waterways, they are grass waterways. So, the idea is to uh, carry away excess runoff from a from any area uh, to a outlet to, to a desired outlet and as we know we have seen in previous classes whenever we design a channel even for bund or for a terrace we always ensure that the flow velocity is non erosive. So, that is why we have to ensure non erosive velocity and that is why in order to check uh, uh, erosion not only velocity also there should not be any kind of erosion caused during the course of water movement in these waterways. So, that is why typically they are lined with erosion resistance grasses. So, that there is no chance of any erosion in the channel either from the bed or from the sides and water could be taken smoothly at a non erosive velocity to the safe outlet. And of course, it, it is they are used for stable conveyance or safe disposal of runoff from an area that we know that whenever there is excess rainfall in an area or, or we want to take away water from a given area to a safe outlet, then we take the help of these grass water wage. And apart from disposing the runoff, these water wage also act as outlets for terraces or graded buns. We saw in the earlier lecture when we design graded terraces and so we always said that uh, graded terraces means the channels are provided a a grade uh, in the longitudinal direction and finally, they, they the terrace, terrace, channels, terrace channels or burns graded burns basically they dispose water to a safe uh, waterway and that safe waterway we were talking these are the grassed waterways basically they, they are at the outlet and, uh, uh, and then uh, uh, whatever terrace channel or graded burns whatever discharge they, they carry they are really taken away from the area using this grass waterways. So, that is the function. So, here as you can see in this picture, uh, it is a typical picture that uh, uh, in the uh, this is the channel bottom and the sides uh, to some extent we provide flexible grasses in the channel that is the erosion resistance grasses. And then in order to avoid any kind of uh, um, pollutants uh, entering into the water from the sides. Uh, we provide uh, these filter strips uh, again vegetative filter strips most of the time so that sediment could be trapped and the capacity of these grass waterways that there is the design capacity of these grass waterways is not affected at all. So, that is that is how 
we ensure by providing these filter strips on the side. And uh, these grass butterflies are constructed along the slope of the area. So, here it is a major diversion earlier whenever we, whenever we talked about a water uh, conservation soil and water conservation structure uh, be it uh, any biological measures or engineering measures like terraces or burns every time we said that they are always taken across the slope, but in this case they are provided along the slope. So, that is the major difference here and that is why I mean if, uh, if, the, if say slope in this direction let us say for example, in, in an area and if we have provided say burns in this direction say for example, in this direction. So, what happens that uh, uh, when the water is taken away by, uh, by the great braided burnt in this direction then on this side of the channel these, these grass waterways could be there. So, that whatever water is taken from this area to this uh, outlet to the outlet of this burnt or it can be could be a terrace also then they can be taken along the slope. So, that is why they are constructed along the slope because many a times they not only just independently, but also they act as a outlet for graded burns or terraces. And typically rational method is used to determine the peak runoff rate which governs the carrying capacity of the grass waterway. So, so for designing the capacity of these grass waterways we use we require peak runoff rate and for estimating peak runoff rate as we have seen throughout we use rational method which is q equals to c i a by 36 and that is why in the introductory lecture i said that this is a very important formula which formula which one should always remember if you are studying uh, this course and permeable velocity approach is used to design these grass waterways so as to carry the estimated flow without damage to the waterway or its lining. So, as we have already seen that uh, every time in earlier designs also when whenever we design a uh, graded channel we always calculate the velocity using Manning's equation and we always see that the velocity is non erosive. So, there we were using the term non erosive velocity, but here the term being used is permissible velocity because uh, in, in a little while we will see that there are some per, 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 permissible velocity limits that are assigned to different kinds of grass waterways. So, idea is the same that uh, the velocity has to be within certain limits. So, that there is a there is no erosion uh, during the process of uh, um, carrying the water through the these waterways. So, that is the whole idea. Now, coming to advantages of these water sets, they may carry large flows which makes them suitable for large water sets. So, I mean they are if, if land is available then designing a large capacity waterway is not a not an issue at all and that is why they can be provided even for large water sets. They do not cause hindrance to the tillage operations as farm machinery can easily cross them. So, their cross section is such design they are their cross section is such design that is the slopes are kept as flat as possible. So, that any farm machinery or tractor can easily uh, move over them and once the grass is established they do not require much maintenance. So, I mean they are almost maintenance free in the beginning when the grass is not yet established probably we have to take care, but once the grass is completely established uh, along the bed and on the sides then probably they almost become maintenance free. So, then one of the great advantages of these grass waterways, but the disadvantage is that they restrict the installation of tile drainage outlet and that is at the outlet side because they also take a lot of space and they are always on the surface. So, tile drainage system may not be uh, uh, it may not be possible to install tile drainage system and at few locations establishment of vegetation is very difficult and that means if the soil characteristics is such that is does not support um, growth of vegetation then probably uh, it will be I mean they, these channels may require a lot of maintenance because uh, uh, we have to always ensure that permissible velocity is there and there is no um, erosion taking place in the channel either through the bed or across the uh, sites. 
Now, some there are certain general considerations. So, before designing the vegetative waterways, following factors should be considered. Number one, slope of the proposed waterway. This may, may need to be modified to get a satisfactory design. So, obviously, uh, when we design, because we have to always see that velocity is within permissible limit. So, obviously, the slope has to be uh, designed accordingly. So, if the slope of the uh, I mean slope of the particular area where the waterway has to pass through, if that is not suitable, then obviously, one has to be careful about that. That vegetation is suitable for site conditions. So, we should know the soil uh, and climatic conditions of a particular place before choosing the right kind of vegetation, because we see that if vegetation grows properly, then they become maintenance free and that is a big advantage. We have to take care of that. Then expected height at which vegetation cover will be maintained both in growing and dormant seasons. So, this is important because this governs the resistance to flow and also sometimes the capacity of the flow. So, that is why we have to be very clear, clear, clear about the expected height at which a vegetation cover has to be maintained. Then allowance for the area of field occupied by the waterway. Uh, I mean, of course, uh, these are not being cultivated, though machinery can uh, easily pass over them, but these are not the not being cultivated. So, from cultivation point of view, these are loss of the area. So, one has to be really careful about that. And allowance for freeboard is required by local standards and specifications. So, obviously. Uh, we, we do not want when we design a grass vegetative waterway or grass waterway, we do not want flow to over top over the ba banks and that is why we have to provide some kind of free board and for that local standards and specification may be taken into account. Now, the success uh, continuing with the general considerations, the success of grass waterways also depend on good conservation treatment of the contributed watershed, because better upstream erosion control will cause less silting in the waterway. It will also reduce the peak rate of runoff and volume of water to be carried by the waterway and uh, of course, it necessitates lesser maintenance of waterway. Obviously, because uh, when these uh, grass waterways are being provided to carry uh, excess runoff to for safe disposal that is the function. Uh, now, if in a watershed in a in a watershed from which the water is coming basically if upstream erosion control will is better then obviously, there is no soil loss from the area that means, the, the flow the soil silt that is being carried by flow to these grass waterway will be minimized to a large extent. Also, a proper uh, conservation treatment is provided in the watershed, then obviously, as we know, which we have seen with terraces and burns and biological measures, then the peak rate of runoff and volume will be uh, controlled uh, to a large extent, because we know that whatever terraces or burns we design, we always see that the slope length is cut. Uh, so, obviously, a lot of uh, if conservation is possible, a lot of moisture is conserved, then obviously, in that case, the peak rate of runoff and the volume of water goes down and for the in that case the capacity required for the for the grass waterway can be reduced significantly. And of course, if flow is less then obviously, maintenance will be even lower for a given waterway. Now, typically a glass lining is not suitable if continuous flow for more than 72 hours are expected. Uh, what it means that just a grass lining probably is not suitable if uh, flow continues for more than 72 hours that is the peak flow continues for longer period of duration then just a grass lining may not suffice and then in that case supplementary treatment like stone centers of surface subsurface drains might be needed and that is a site specific case where the flow uh, peak flow continues for a longer period of time. And until permanent vegetative cover is established in these vegetative waterways, uh, it may require frequent maintenance or repair. So, we know that once the vegetative cover is established, they become maintenance free, but by the until that time, until that until the time the vegetative cover is established in a better way, they, they require frequent maintenance or repair, because uh, uh, you want that you do not want 
any erosion to take place in the channel so side that is why you have to always see that uh, I mean uh, this the surface is smooth and there are no loose soil particles in the bed or either in the side. So, that is why you have to keep on maintaining uh, these uh, or repairing these channels or water wedge. Now, coming to design considerations, um, uh, the following site specific factors need to be assessed while designing the vegetative water wedge. Soil properties because these govern the permissible flow velocity and design discharge. So, uh, is, uh, we have already seen that we use permissible velo flow velocity concept. So, that is why soil properties are important. Then vegetation management, they are critical to provide expected level of protection for the channel, the protection of course, because vegetative that is the uh, that is why the name itself is vegetative waterway or grass waterway and includes the choice of vegetation and its height to be maintained. So, obviously, we have to be careful what kind of vegetation we have to grow, what is the height to be maintained and what is the expected level of protection uh, that is required for the channel. Then climate impact the site hydrology and design discharge. So, obviously, the climate or the precipitation or the rainfall that impacts that is uh, that based on that only we decide what will be the design capacity of the of the uh, grass waterway. So, that is why the climate is very important and also climate affects the vegetation selection and level of maintenance required. So, uh, not only in the capacity also what kind of vegetation is chosen that depends on the climate. Coming to design process, there, there are certain steps that need to be followed. Step 1 says plan the optimum location of the waterway center line. So, obviously, that is from the uh, uh, layout point of view that in the field we should have the proper idea where the waterway will be centered uh, along. Step 2 select design points along the waterway where grades, drainage areas and type of lining change significantly. This is very important because uh, uh, it, the sites may require that if it is a channel which is uh, it, if, if, if a waterway is designed uh, for a long place, uh, long uh, for a long uh, distance, then the site conditions might require that the slope of the bed slope changes or the cross section changes. So, all those grades or drainage area or the type of lining, uh, the flow total flow uh, coming to the waterway may also change. So, because of that, uh, the conditions may change, the design parameters may change. So, that is why we have to identify such uh, locations a priori. Then step 3 says determine the watershed area for the points in step 2 and for the outlet. So, for each point here uh, and the outlet we should know what is the contributing area because that will be essential to know how much flow is really uh, approaching uh, a given point or at the outlet. Compute the peak runoff produced by the design storm. So, we have to choose the design storm and compute the peak runoff using rational formula which we have already seen. Determine the slope of each reach of the channel from the topographic map profiles or cross section. So, these are once uh, we know that the cross sections will change. So, these are referred to as reach. So, this could be reach 1, this could be reach 2 and so on. So, for each of these reaches we have to really decide what should be the slope provided and uh, for that we can also get the elevations uh, bed elevations from topographic map. The next step is step 6 select the appropriate channel cross section and type of channel lining to be used. So, we have to decide on what kind of cross section we want to provide and uh, then uh, what are the what is the type of lining or what is the type of grass or vegetation we are going to uh, choose for a given place. Step 7 is design the channel for stability typically based on sparsest and shortest vegetation expected. And so, that means we have to I mean keep the factor of safety in mind and that is why we have to always design for the worst conditions that is we have to assume that our uh, vegetation will be sparse and this is it will be of short length uh, short uh, height and for that we design the channel. And then step 8 adjust the depth to obtain adequate capacity based on the densest and longest vegetation expected. 
So, we design first for worst condition and then we adjust for the best possible condition that when our uh, when our uh, vegetation will be dense enough and it will be longest. So, or uh, high, highest actually and finally, add up apportment structures as needed to allow for prolonged flow. So, that means, uh, some safety structures we have to provide. Then uh, coming to initial design parameters uh, like slope, discharge, section and lining. If there are significant changes in slope or discharge along the waterway, it may be necessary to design the waterway in reaches. Just now we discussed this point. A reach or segment is generally a portion of the waterway having a near uniform slope, discharge, soil type and vegetal cover. So, that means when we say we, we say a channel has two reach, two reaches that is reach 1 and reach 2. So, each reach we are what we are talking about that each reach will have a nearly uniform slope, discharge, soil type and vegetal. So, that is why whenever there is a possibility of any kind of change we design channel in reaches and point of significant break in slope is a point of division between two reaches. So, if elevation suddenly changes then obviously, we have to change the reach and a point of entrance or diversion or other tributary where the discharge is significantly increasing or increased may also be a point of diversion between two points. So, if, if suddenly if we have designed and suddenly we expect that some tributary some channel will join the flow will join and the flow will become significantly higher. So, then also we can from this point onwards we can go for a new reach. So, depends on uh, the conditions uh, how many reaches should be there along a uh, long uh, waterway. Then also large changes in soil properties may also require cross sectional modification. So, if cross section changes then also reach changes. So, where there is a significant difference in cross section or slope between adjoining reaches it may be necessary to install a transition section between them. So, if you have designed a channel reach 1 and then there is a significant uh, elevation difference channel reach 2 moves like this then obviously, we do not want that uh, a significant fall to take place here and that is why we, we typically design a transaction section to ensure a smooth transition of flow from this reach to this reach. And when the limits of two or more reaches have been determined each reach is designed separately by standard procedure. So, once we know the conditions for each reach independently then they are designed so. Then continuing with the uh, uh, slope discharge section lining or initial design parameters waterways are constructed to, dis to discharge peak flow expected from at least 10 year frequency 24 hour duration is term. So, 10 year frequency 24 hour duration is term basically decides what is the capacity peak flow or what is the capacity of these waterways. The shape selected should be compatible with surrounding landform and landscape characteristic more from aesthetic sense that uh, suddenly it is a particular typical shape should not be put it should conform to whatever landscape uh, desires. Side slopes may be varied to better balance cut and fill. So, because there will when we, we design the channel or when we construct the channel uh, cutting and filling will be required. So, we might adjust side slope in such a way that balance uh, the cut and fill is balanced. So, that the earthwork required will be the least. On sites where it is impossible to establish suitable permanent vegetation a rigid or paved lining may be used. So, this is diversion if a situation does not allow at all uh, any vegetation then we go more for a paved lining material and a free board or extra depth should be provided to take care of sedimentation. So, that is always a factor of safety we always provide whenever we design a channel. Uh, size of the waterway, the size of grass waterway depends upon the expected runoff from the catchment area and that is 24 hour uh, 10 years frequency and uh, 10 year frequency 24 hour storm is used to calculate the design discharge of the waterway and cross sectional area of the waterway is estimated using the continuity equation that is q equals to a times v where a is the cross sectional area, q is the peak runoff rate and v is the velocity of flow. 
then shape of the waterway shape of the waterway depends on the site conditions and types of construction equipment that are used as already mentioned the three, three basic shapes are parabolic trapezoidal and triangular as you can see here this is parabolic trapezoidal and triangular and uh, uh, the basic design um, features of these are here so if it is trapezoidal uh, here b is the bed width this is bed width d small d is the depth of flow z is the side slope uh, and uh, h is to v and capital d is the depth of flow uh, plus free board provided and small t is the water surface width and capital t is the channel top width so from then from geometric characteristics uh, their typical uh, formulae for trapezoidal v shaped triangular or parabolic are here a equals to bd plus zd square for trapezoidal a equals to 2 dd by 3 and so on the weighted perimeter top width top width with free board all the formulae are readily available and from geometry we can calculate also we do not have to even remember these formulae. Now coming to velocity of flow as I already mentioned there is a permissible velocity of flow in the grassed waterway uh, which uh, depends on the type and condition of vegetation and uh, uh, if the sparse grass cover is there then the flow velocity recommended is 0 0.9 to 1 to if it is a good grass cover then 1.5 to 1.8 and sort of excellent cover then the velocity could be 2 to 2.5 meter per second. So, this is the permissible velocity we have to always uh, design keep in mind while designing a uh, channel. And permissible velocity may also vary with the uh, soil types. So, for example, if it is a sandy loam soil, if it is a clean water then permissible velocity is 0.55 meters and if it is colloidal water then it is 0.75 meters per second, but it is the vegetation which uh, governs the permissible velocity basically. Then coming to grade of the waterway, channel grade of approximately 5 percent is usually recommended for grass water weight and in no case it should exceed 10 percent. The width depends on the flow rate, slope and available land obviously. On the small fields width could be 1 to 2 meters and on large cultivated fields it could be 20 to 60 meters. So, it all depends on how much area we have and accordingly depth will be governed. Depth of waterway affects the field operation that is a deeper waterway provides problem to carry from machineries. So, a free board of 20 to 10 to 15 centimeter a day. So, if a uh, uh, wider width is there then obviously, dip can could be uh, kept lower. So, that field operations are not impacted, but otherwise if uh, site conditions do not permit sufficient width then obviously, we have to in increase the depth of the uh, waterway. Then uh, if, if we take a typical case of designing a, a, a grass waterway where, where shape carrying capacity and bed slope are known. So, in that case the design of channel parameters uh, we use following steps number 1 assume the value of flow depth and calculate the channel cross sectional area weighted perimeter hydraulic radius and top width. These are, we, we know that once we have decided the shape trapezoidal. So, we can we straight formula we can use and decide all these uh, values. Then second is determine the mean velocity of flow by using Manning's formula that is 1 by n r to the power 2 by 3 s power half we have calculated hydraulic radius we already know the bed slope. So, velocity can be calculated. Then uh, uh, these uh, these number uh, these uh, parameters we already understand uh, important thing is Manning's n Manning's roughness coefficient for vegetated waterway typically n equals to 0 0.04. Uh, and Chow 1959 uh, reports a minimum value of 0 0.03 and maximum value of 0.5 for vegetal lining. So, that these are the ranges, but typical value we take is n equals to 0.04. Step 3 is determine the discharge rate through the channel q equals to a v and uh, step 4 check if the velocity is safe and the carrying capacity of the channel is within the permissible range. So, we have to once we have calculated q and v we have to ensure that. And then step 5 is if the velocity is unsafe the carrying capacity is not within the permissible range then repeat the process with another set of assumed value in step 1 till the carrying capacity is found to be within the permissible range. So, I mean we have to ensure that velocity 
is within permissible velocity limit, but at the same time the carrying capacity is sufficient uh, to carry the discharge we have calculated using the 10 year 24 hour frequency using the rational formula. And step 6 is a free board of 10 to 15 centimeter is added to assume channel depth and this is this we have already seen this is to in order to uh, provide safety factor against any kind of sedimentation. So, we have uh, seen uh, the basic uh, design features, what are the requirements, what are what could be the site conditions, what are the recommendations and what is the typical steps that are involved in designing a grass waterway and in next lecture we will see how to really use these concepts to design a grass waterway or to solve certain problems dealing with the design of grass waterway. Thank you very much. <laughs>